Chapter 69 Oh, so that's who Fenris smelled in Chapter 63. We must have lost an entire day returning to Valhalla, because dinner was underway in the feast hall of the slain. Valkyries flew around with mead pitchers, in her yard threw bread, roasted Samirner at each other, clusters of musicians jammed out all over the room. The fiesta slowly quieted as our procession made its way towards the thane's table. An honor guard of Valkyries carried the bodies of Gunilla, Irene, and Margaret, covered with white linen on stretchers. I had hoped the fallen might come back to life when they reached Valhalla. Couldn't Valkyries become in her yar? But it didn't happen. Mallory X, TJ, and Halfborn followed the litters. Sam, Blitzen, and Hearth and I brought up the caboose. Warriors glared at us as we passed. The Valkyries' expressions were even worse. I was surprised we weren't killed before we reached the Thanes. I suppose the crowd wanted to see us publicly humiliated. They didn't know what we'd done. They knew we were escaped rogues brought back for judgment, following the bodies of the three Valkyries. We weren't shackled, but I still shuffled along as if the rope and Scotty was wrapped around my ankles. I cradled the ceramic jar in the crook of my arm. Whatever else happened, I couldn't lose that. We stopped in front of the Thane's tables. Eric, Helgi, Leif, and all the Eric, other Erics looked grim. Even my old buddy, hunting the bellhop, stared at me with shock and disappointment, as if I'd taken away his chocolate. Helgi finally spoke. Explain. I saw no reason to hold anything back. I didn't speak loudly, but my, vo my words echoed throughout the hall. When I got to the fight with Fenris, my voice failed me. Sam picked up the story. When she was done, the Thane sat silently. I couldn't read their mood. Perhaps they were more unsure now than angry, but it didn't matter. Despite my talk with my father, I didn't feel proud of what we'd accomplished. I was only alive because the three Valkyries in front of me had kept the fire giants at bay while we chained the wolf. No punishment for the Thanes could make me feel worse about that. Finally, Helgi rose. This is the most serious matter to come before this table in many years. If you speak truly, you have done deeds worthy of warriors. You have stopped Fenris Wolf from breaking free. You have sent Surt back to Muspelheim. But you acted as rogues, without the leave of the Thanes, and in questionable company. He glanced distastefully at Hearth, Blitz, and Sam. Loyalty, Magnus Chase. Loyalty to Valhalla is everything. The Thanes must discuss this in private before passing judgment, unless Odin wishes to intercede. He glanced at the vacant wooden throne, which of course stayed empty. Perched on the backrest, the ravens fixed me with the glittering black eyes. Very well, Helgi sighed. We... To my left, a booming voice said, Odin wishes to intercede. Nervous murmurs rippled throughout the feast hall. X raised his stone gray face to the Thanes. X, TJ whispered, this is no time for a joke. Odin wishes to intercede, said the half-troll stubbornly. His appearance changed. His huge trollish shape dropped away like a camouflage fabric. In X's place stood a man who looked like a retired drill sergeant. He was barrel-chested with massive arms, stuffed in short-sleeve Hotel Valhalla polo shirt. His gray hair was close-cropped, his beard cut square to accentuate his hardened weather face. A black patch covered his left eye. His right eye was dark blue, the color of vein blood. At his side hung a sword so massive it made Jack the Pennant tremble on, it, tremble on his chain. The man's name tag read, Odin, Allfather, Owner, and Founder. Odin! Sam dropped to one knee. The god smiled down at her. Then he gave me what I thought was a conspiratorial wink, though it was hard to tell since he only had one eye. His name rippled through the feast hall. The Enher Yar got to their feet. The Thanes rose and bowed deeply. Odin, formerly the half-troll known as X, marched around the table and took his place at the throne. The two ravens landed on his shoulder and pecked affectionately at his ears. Well, Odin's voice boomed, what does a god have to do to get a cup of meat around here?